<laughs> All right, y'all. We're back. We're about to start cooking. I want to turn this around and show you what you're going to need. Uh, and then I'll put the actual recipe uh, in the comments below so you'll be able to get the recipe. You'll need minced garlic, oregano powder or leaves since this is a liquid. The leaves work just as good. Smoked paprika, ground cumin, chili powder, kosher salt, garlic salt. If you're a no chili, no beans and chili, turn off it now because I'm going to offend you. Red beans, can and a half of tomato sauce, two cans of Rotel, one can of tomato paste. I am not Mr. Organic. That's what we had. That's what I'm using. Chipotle peppers and adobo sauce. You're going to need a yellow onion, three quarters of a pack of bacon, and two pounds of meat. So essentially that's the ingredient for chili. We're going to cook it outside on that pot, on the fryer. On these pots, you got to be very, very careful because they're super thin. You will burn a pot fast, so you're going to cook it slow. And that's another reason why we use bacon is that bacon grease helps keep it from um, sticking and burning. So that's what we're going to be doing here. And we'll get started here shortly. First thing we do is we're going to chop that onion up into very fine pieces. You want to chop it pretty thin. Full caveat, I'm not a professional chef. I do not. I can't do it. I can't do it. So, onions chopped. Now we'll start the fire. The fire going, so now we're going to put the bacon in here. And it's, uh, you don't have to use any real expensive bacon, just real cheap, thin bacon. And you don't want to fry it because you don't want to hard your chili, right? So all you're doing is letting it get the pan greasy and keeping it soft. Cook it soft. So I put the bacon and the onions in together. I let that bacon grease caramelize those onions. Kind of helps set, set up your base for your chili. Propane burner, it's actually a fish fryer, but the base is kind of a generic, general base I got from the Bass Pro Shop. Works for everything. I'm gonna move, we'll move that Magellan chair out of there. You. <laughs> Caveat, don't forget to do what I just did. Cut those, cut those pieces of bacon in bite side pieces. About that big, so you want to take those strips and cut them you know, into bite side pieces because you don't want it overpowering or over big in one piece of bacon. Like, that chili, you don't want one huge piece of bacon inside of it. So you can chop it real, real small, you can make it bite size. I like to make it bite size. It's going to shrink up as it cooks, anyways. I don't do competition style, three, four dumps. I've won competitions on this chili. It's simple, it's easy. You can get home in the afternoon and cook it for dinner. You don't have to try to plan all day and all night to make this chili. It's a really easy, simple recipe, but very good. Dad, you need an apron that says uh, Big Country Chef. Sound like you need to buy me one for Christmas. <laughs> Next thing, if you don't already know, never use metal. Don't use metal on hardly anything. Cast iron, uh, enamel, metal's not your friend. It'll scratch the enamel, it'll scratch the cast iron, and use wood. So I just turned the fire down because it's starting to, you can feel it starting to get a little crunchy on the bottom. I just want to tell you these pans are so, so thin. Really got to cook it on low temp. Gotcha. So while that, while those uh, onions cook down in that bacon, we're gonna go ahead and open up all the cans we're gonna need, and then I'm gonna mix all the seasoning together in a glass bowl. Again, uh, the description of all the um, the recipe will be listed down below. So we got everything open except for the pop tops. We'll open them in just a minute. Now we're going going into the what goes into it, the seasoning. Start off with a third of a cup of chili powder. 
a half a teaspoon of cumin. You want two teaspoons of oregano. Two teaspoons of smoked paprika. Put that much right there. Two teaspoons of kosher salt. And three teaspoons of minced garlic. That's the granddaughter Addy Bug. Now the special ingredient is the garlic salt. As this is kind of frying and seasoning, you just want to give it a heavy sprinkle of this. Now you're putting three teaspoons of garlic already in it. This just helps the onions and the bacon a little bit. I always put a little garlic salt on my onions when I'm sauteing them. It just helps bring out the flavor, to me anyway. So if you'll come over and look, you can see that these... The bacon is starting to fry up a little bit. We don't, again, we don't want that bacon fried, right? But you can see that yellowness, that, that translucent is coming into those onions real nice. That's what you want. We'll give that a few more minutes just to continue to caramelize a little bit and then we will essentially dump everything else in there. Actually, I don't use very lean meat because you kind of want the liquid to help with all the seasoning and it helps you not to add water to it. Uh, we've got the bacon grease in there just a little bit. But I just use the cheap 7327. Brown that up before we put anything in. You kind of want it brown. There we, go. we broke down that that uh, log. Just kind of spread it out. Now this recipe is for two and a half or three pounds of meat. Um, I use it because this, this is going to really melt down to about two pounds of meat after it melts down. If you're using very thin or real high class or high dollar hamburger meat, uh, again, it's for two pounds of that. I use it for three pounds of this meat. If that's too much for your family, just cut my recipe in half uh, for one pound. If you're just cooking for two, cooking for three, I cook for five or six all the time, so I make a lot. I don't put any cayenne pepper or anything. Um, I use the adobo, the chipotle pepper and adobo sauce. If you're sensitive to very spicy and you don't want it very spicy, you may want to pull one of these peppers out or two and just use the sauce because it does make it a little kicky. Uh, from an alarm standpoint, it's not going to set the world on fire or anything like that, but it, uh, it does add just enough spice for my family. Um, and if we needed it more spicy, we would add more than that. I don't use cayenne for a lot of reasons, but that's just a better, uh, it adds to the flavor. And uh, you, it's easy to take it out. Like I said, you can pull that completely out. You can pull one of the peppers out. Kind of play with it to fit your family's needs. You can see I got a very low heat here. I do not want it burning or sticking to the bottom. Just enough to start browning. Starting to get something going on over here now. Starting to water some separating that meat, which will just help those onions and everything. And 
Again, this I don't have to add a bunch of water to the, my chili because I use the, the, the grease out of the, the meat and the bacon. Again, if you're, if you can't use my recipe to go in any chili cook-offs. This is not a cook-off chili. I'm gonna be very clear with that. That hog meat will probably get you disqualified in most big chili cook-offs. So don't think you're gonna watch this and go right to a chili cook-off. You're not. This is for feeding your family at home. This is country living. This is just good family cooking. Um, most of my recipes, I get the base of the recipe from Kent Rollins. He's kind of my mentor. Uh, I try to follow. Uh, him and I'll link his channel below because uh, just about everything I know that I've learned about cooking in the last four or five years has come from Kent. So I just add my little extras to it. Like he doesn't use bacon in his chili, I do. Uh, he doesn't use a, a garlic salt from other things I do. Um, so we're a little different, but it, that's that's the beautiful part about food is you can take a base recipe, play with it, make some adjustments to it to fit your family and your taste buds. Um, but definitely want to give credit to Kent where he comes from. He is amazing. He's the, the master of cowboy cooking. Um, he's taught me all I know about Dutch ovens and things like that. So I definitely want to give him props for all that. Because a big portion of my cooking, as you if you follow my other uh, channels, Instagram and Facebook, you'll have seen this morning I made his buttermilk biscuits on the Dutch oven. We didn't think about getting the camera out to film that, but we should have, but we didn't. So. Um, that's where I get a lot of my inspiration from, is from Kent and his channel. Follow me on all my social media. I'll link my Instagram and Facebook down below too, so you can follow me there as well. If there's something you want to see me cook, comment below. Let me know what you want me to cook. I'll be happy to. We've got, uh, like I said, we've got this. We've got the smoker, the regular pit, my Weber, and my Fernetto. Um, I don't have any big fancy trailer barbecue pits or... Uh, big smokers. I do everything that's something you could do in your backyard. I literally live in a fifth wheel in an RV resort, as you can see behind me in my lake. Um, the view is amazing, but I don't have a lot of resources as far as being able to build master fire pits and things like that. I cook on what you can cook on. Home Depot, HEB, Lowe's, wherever you want to shop, get you a bullet smoker, a Weber grill. I'll show you how to make fantastic award-winning food on just your regular household stuff that you can have in your backyard. So we're ready to make our dump now. First thing goes in is the dry because the meat's wet. It's brown if you as you'll come see here. Brown is starting to bubble and boil. So we'll be going with all the dry seasoning. We'll give that a good stirring up there. If you can smell that coming off of that, woo! It's gonna be some good cowboy chili right here. Now what you want to do, once you get that all mixed in, shine if you bring that camera over here. Once you get that all mixed up, it looks kind of almost like taco meat. You want to let it cook for just a minute. It's got to incorporate. A lot of people, that's their mistake, is they dump it, dump all the liquid on top of it, it didn't have time to incorporate those seasons. We just put a whole lot of seasoning on that meat. That meat's got to suck that seasoning in. How it does that is by letting it incorporate. Now's the first time we'll put the lid on it. We want to let that incorporate for about four or five minutes. You can see it's kind of boiling in there. That's exactly what you want it to do. All right, so it's been five minutes. I'm trying to get you a close up of that. Get the spoon here. Oh, 
that seasoning has now been incorporated with that meat and that bacon. Now we'll start dumping the liquid. And the Rotel Original have, adds a little bit of, of uh, organic spice to it as well. That's another reason why I don't use a lot of spicy seasonings. I hate doing this, but this is the best way I can tell you how to get that out. Turn your spoon upside down. Family dog. Yep, Dave's the assistant. Always by my side. Again, if you're not a beans chili person, this is going to offend you. So I've wiped off the handle of my spoon so I can get back in there. It's all mixed together. So with these adobo peppers too, they're easy enough where you can pick them out if you don't want them. See, they're pretty big. My recommendation is try it first with it. You'll know whether it's too hot or not hot enough. If you need a little more heat for your family, add another can of it. So, so now we've got everything incorporated here. All the all the liquid that's going to be in this chili is in this chili now. We're going to set the lid on it, turn the heat down just a little bit, and we're going to check it in about 10, 10 minutes or so uh, to see how she looks. Go. All right, so we're 10 minutes into the cook of all the stuff. You'll see it starting to boil and come together. You'll see those color separations. That's what you want. You want that to separate a little bit. Give her a little stir. Scrape the bottom of that pan. You'll feel, you'll know if you're, if you're on too hot a fire, it'll start to burn down there. Do not scrape any burn off. Just feel it. Because once that does, if you contaminate that chili with any of that burn, it will literally contaminate your whole pot. As you can see here, if you're doing it right, there is no scrape on it. So there's nothing sticking to the bottom of this pan. So we've done good. We've, had, we've got a good enough greasing going with the bacon cooking on low enough heat that we're not having to worry about it burning the bottom of that pan. So we're 50 minutes exactly into this cook right now. I'm going to let it cook for another 10 minutes. I'll do a little taste test on it to see how it's going. Uh, like I said, this is about an hour to an hour and a half recipe. We're 50 minutes right now. You just don't want to pull it off the fire too much because your flavors have to incorporate. That's a uh, part of the chili is it's got to cook together. Uh, and it needs about 30 minutes or so to do that. So we're 50 minutes in. Everything's looking fine. We'll be back at you in a little bit. Oh, uh, she's coming along nice. She's boiling good. See that's starting to stick a little. Trying to, it's trying to stick there. So what we're going to do is we're going to we're going to start stirring this about every four or five minutes now, just to keep it from sticking at the bottom. Again, we don't want to contaminate this entire cook with a little burnt meat because it does. I've done it before, trust me. Learn from experience. Nothing stuck. You can see the bottom there, but it was it was about to try to start, so we don't want that to happen. So we're going to start checking this about every five minutes. And this, this really will probably be done in maybe another five or ten minutes. We should be good to go. All 
All right, y'all been five minutes. Checking like the service, yeah. Perfect. Perfect. No sticking. Taste uh, testing. The audience says it uh, smells delicious. I think it's time for a little taste test here. Gotta get a bean in there. Gotta get a bean for you non chili bean people. I learned my lesson a long time ago. That will burn the top of your mouth clean off. Give it a minute. It's done. Wow. It's done. It's really good. So now, it's obviously too hot to eat. I'm going to turn the fire off. And then uh, we're going to let it set for about 5 or 10 minutes. And we'll show you what a bowl full of it looks like. Alright y'all. We're exactly an hour and 15 minutes in. So if you're getting home from work at 5, you're eating by 6.30. Okay, this again, this is a very simple, quick recipe. One scoop just isn't going to be enough, I promise you. Alright guys, that's really it. Now you garnish it with whatever you want to garnish it with, crackers, Cornbread, if you got some, a little cheese. I like to put a little cheese on mine. And that's really it. I hope you enjoyed the video. Please like and subscribe. Hit the uh, bell notification to make sure you're notified of when I put a, no a new video on. Uh, we're going to be trying to film more than we have been in the past, but uh, we sure appreciate it and uh, spread the word. Uh, if you want some simple country cooking, uh, something that every family can do, follow the channel. Thanks for subscribing.